Shabbat Shalom, Senbet Salam. This is the 38th Sabbath in our lunar solar year or the lunar solar cycle, Hebrew cycle. And this uh, 38th Senbet or Shabbat is named Korach. Korach or really more correctly Korach. Korach. Though it's spelled Korach. It's not Korach, but it's Korach, Korach. And that's the Hebrew name, the Hebrew name Korah Bamarinya in the Amharic. This is known as Kore, Kore, Kore. And it's said to mean baldness, ice, hail, or frost. And it's the second word or the first distinctive word in the parsha, which is the kuful or the weekly Torah portion. And this is the 38th weekly Torah or orit portion in the annual Hebrew cycle of the Senbetawi Minbab or Nibab, the Torah readings. And it's the fifth, the fifth in the book of Numbers, the fifth in the book of Numbers. And it constitutes Numbers 16, chapter 16, to Numbers chapter 18. And now the Hebrews in the diaspora, I and I, we generally read it in June or early July. All depends on the timekeeping and the calculation of time. That's a that's another related matter, but um, understanding the calendar, understanding the the lunar and the solar cycle of time, or what we call the Ethiopian or the Hebraic, which is the lunar, and the Ethiopic, which is the solar calculation of time, and and marrying it or seeing it in in the oneness and the truth of the scriptures and of our true way of life is very very important now anyway a summary of this particular portion this 38th um senbet or sabbath torah reading the summary is it begins with with korah's rebellion of korah's rebellion the second matter is the plague that was upon the rebels the third matter is concerning Aaron's or Harun's budding staff or the staff that budded. And then the fourth matter in this 38th sabbatical reading and feeding concerns the duties, the duties of the priest and the duties of the Levites. Now, in the Schofield reference Bible, also known as the Schofield Study Bible that we utilize, when we turn to Numbers chapter 16, as a subscription, it mentions the years of wandering. This is concerning the years of wandering, or the wandering of the Israelites in the wilderness. Now, if we, if we review and go back to the 37th sabbatical reading and the feeding and chapter 15 we have the beginning of the years of wandering the beginning of the years of wandering and it says in the foot in the in the in the subscription the end anticipate now there's a footnote that we didn't address um as of yet Hopefully, in your studies in the 37th portion, you looked at the footnotes in the Schofield Reference Bible, both for the Gades Barnea as well as for the wilderness. The wilderness. There's a footnote here, very important footnote. Let's just touch on it because it connects with what we're about to get into right now concerning Kore. Kore. And it speaks that the wilderness was part of the necessary discipline. The wilderness experience of the Beta Israel, it was part of the necessary discipline of the redeemed people, of the redeemed people, but not the years of wandering. In other words, what it's explaining to us here is that the wilderness experience is a necessary part of the discipline 
of the redeemed people and of any redeemed people or even as individuals, redeemed individuals, to the King of Kings in his Christ, Getachin Jesus Christos, we must experience the wilderness part of the necessary discipline when we individually as well as collectively are redeemed. And many who have been sensitive to the leadings of the Holy Spirit and of the Father in and through Christ have no doubt experienced that, that wilderness part. However, it states that the wilderness part was necessary discipline of the redeemed people, but not the years of wandering, not the years of wandering. In other words, the Almighty had deemed as a necessary discipline to discipline the people going through that wilderness, much like prophetically speaking of the, of the once lost but now found Beta Israel or the so-called lost black sheep in the Americas and the Caribbean, they had to go through that wilderness experience being that redeemed people of the King of Kings in and through Jesus Christos. However, we were not to, it was not part of his plan, the years of wandering. See, the years of wandering shows the lost state the law state going through the wilderness is one experience a necessary discipline but wandering means that ones have lost their way it goes on to say that the latter the latter which is the years of wandering were due wholly and entirely to the unbelief the unbelief or the lack of faith of the people at the Kades Barnea that's what we said previously that Kades Barnea is a very important topical theme that one should spend the time researching and, and studying the meaning of it and the reference to it to understand how that fits into the, 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 the big prophetical and proverbial picture. Now, the Red Sea, Mara, Elim, Sina, were God's ways, were Ha Elohim's ways in development and discipline, in other words, the Red Sea experience of the Beit Israel, the Mara experience, the Elim experience, the Sina experience, all four were Ha Elohim's ways. These were Jah's ways in the development and the discipline and have of necessity their counterpart. Now we can understand by getting this foundation, the counterpart or the comparative the correspondence and the correspondence is in the Christian, the true Christian experience. Now, the Red Sea, for example, it speaks of the cross, the Mescal, as that which death to Christ, but is life for us. So the Red Sea speaks of the cross as that which is, is death and was death to the Moshiach but was a life for us, life for I and I. Separates us, it separates I and I from the Egypt of the lower world or the world, according to Galatians 6 and 14. Secondly, Mara speaks of God's Ha Elohim's power to turn untoward things and situations into Barakat. So Mara speaks of the Almighty's power to turn that which seems untoward things and situations into a barakat or into a blessing, into blessing for us. Because Mara, no doubt you remember that those were the bitter waters, how the bitter waters were turned sweet. And this, and this is a, there's a correspondence here to what the New Testament, what is said in the New Testament, the Hadith Kidan, concerning... Um, for we know that all things work towards the good of those who love the Lord, who love Adonai, and are called according to his, his purpose, to say called according to his, his will. Now, thirdly, Elim speaks of God's Ha Elohim's power, his Chayel, to give rest, the power of the Almighty to give rest, and refreshment by the way, by the way, as they go along the way that the Almighty is able to give us that rest and refreshment 
along this difficult journey and this rocky road. Now, Sina or Sinai, it speaks of Ha Elohim's Kedisana or his islandness, his holiness. It speaks of Jah's holiness, his Kedisana, and our deep, our deep inherent evil, the deep inherent evil. The experience best is mentioned when we study Romans, Romans chapter 7, verses 7 to 24. So far, the path was and is of Ha Elohim. So, so far as we follow the, the Red Sea, Mara, Elim, Sina, we find that the path or the way was and is of the true and the living God. But from the Cades Barnea to the Jordanos, all save the grace of God toward an unbelieving people is for warning, is for warning. In other words, all these examples that we get now from the Cades Barnea to the Jordanos, except for the grace of God, except for the, the eternal grace of God. This was toward an unbelieving people. These are the experience towards a, a people who lack that true faith. And it's used for warning. These are these are warnings or admonitions to us. And they are not to be um, imitated. In other words, we're not to seek to do what they did. In other words, these are not for imitation, but they were for warning. Now, 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verses 1 to 11, um, speaks on this matter, as well as Hebrews chapter 3, verses 17 to 19. Take note of this, and please, my brothers and sisters, look this up so you can see the connection in the fact that the experience now that we're about to go into and what I really have begun from, from the last week's, the 37th uh, sabbatical uh, Torah reading, from the Cades to the Jordanos, was, was the Almighty's warning and his, and, and, and his, and his uh, chastisements and even judgments of a ungodly or a, a disbelieving or a people who lacked the true faith and who lacked faith in the king of kings and his christ so this is warning and not imitation there is a present rest there is a present now rest of ha elohim of egzi abher lotus subha of which the senmet the sabbath the shabbat and the kanaan the kanaanu were types in the words, there is a present rest of God for us, of Jah for us in this present time. And it's that the Sabbath and the Kanaan we find are types of this present rest of Jah, the present rest of Yahweh, into which the true Mitmanan, the true and faithful ones may and therefore should enter enter by faith not by works but enter by faith and now hebrews chapter 3 to chapter 4 plus the schofield uh reference bible notes go into this matter in in more detail and that's another note reference to put in your copy book hebrews chapter 3 to 4 and and the company note that speaks on this present rest of Ha Elohim, of which the Sabbath, the Senbet, and the and the Kanaan. For us, this will be the keeping of Sabbath and Africa in that sense. In particular, Ethiopia are types of this into which the Mitmanan, those who are true and faithful, the Manyoch, may and therefore should enter by faith, Be'imnet, by faith, Be'amen. You understand? But I mean, by the rit it I mean. Now, what is interesting here, there's another note which speaks about it's remarkable that just when the people are turning in unbelief or lack of faith from the land, you see that note right there? I think it's on page 186. 
of the Schofield Reference Bible, it says it is remarkable that just when the people, the people italicized right there, speaking of the once lost but now found, Beta Israel or the black sheep of the family, when they were turning, turning in lack of faith from the land as during the 60s and the 70s and and then the the, the snowball effect came into effect but as the people really, really even before that like we could say roughly around between the 50s and the and the 60s because this happened all simultaneously in the same way that we find here Ben Midbar or in the Orit Zahulkwe the book of numbers in the wilderness that it's remarkable that when the people were turning in a lack of faith from the land, from coming out of Babylon, coming out of Egypt and returning, in other words, the back to Africa or the forward to Africa, that Ha Elohim, he gives directions, that John gives us directions for conduct when they should have entered it, that he still gives directions for how to enter, for, for, for what I and I conduct, how I and I should behave ourselves. And there's a beautiful connection in Romans chapter 11, um, verse 29, as well as I think Philemon 1 and, and, and 6. Now, there's also the matter that we didn't touch on before concerning the, the Zitzis. The Zitzis. We're going to touch on the Zitzis as well as the, as the Shema or the Shema and the phylacteries and the tefillin and and these other these other um reminders that's what these are these are reminders for us you understand we're going to turn to 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 touch on that in his own teaching this is to tie in what this particular this present 38th sabbatical or, or torah reading is about by giving a little bit of the foundation if if you have not already uh found this out for yourself as we touch on chapter 15 just review chapter 15 and when it speaks about the fringes which are very very important speak to the children of israel and bid them that they make them fringes in the borders of their garments throughout their generations. Not in that generation only, but throughout all of their generations. So if we are Beit Israel. This means this is still true and good for us in our generation, seeing that we have recovered the consciousness of our true identity and that they put upon the, the fringe of the borders a ribbon of blue, a ribbon of blue. And now the ribbon of blue, blue is the Samayawi Elam or the heavenly color that's used upon the borders of the priest or the priestical garments, the garments of the Kahinat, the Kahinat um, lips or lip soach, then signify that the servants of Ha Elohim, of Hashem, were to be heavenly, Samayawi, in obedience. That, that blue now signifies the rule of heaven vis-a-vis -vis obedience and character as well as separate, separate from earthly or worldly, but to say earthly in the sense of worldly ambitions and desires. The priests were set apart for the agel gelot or the service of the tabernacle and to be the preeminent representatives of the theocracy or the God ordained, Jah's ordained government amongst the Beta Israel. Now, when we turn to chapter 16, in beginning this 38th sabbatical reading and feeding, and this 38th weekly Torah portion, the Parasha, Be'ibrayist, or Bamarinya in the Amharic, we call it Kufl. And this is called Parsha in the Hebrew, the portion. And we're in the 38th weekly Torah portion that's known as Korah. Korah, Bamarinya, is called Kore. Now, this constitutes Numbers chapter 16, chapter 17, chapter 18. The first matter that we're going to address is Korah's rebellion. Korah's rebellion. Korah's rebellion, and this is continuing the years of wandering, 
of what we have uh, also coined and termed as wanderlust, the wanderlust, wandering after one's own unordained, un, 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 disobedient, disobedient and unregenerated, unregenerated um, thoughts, feelings, attitudes, mixed up moods and attitudes is another good way to term it. Now, here it speaks on the gainsaying, the gainsaying of Korah, the gainsaying of Korah. Now, what is the gainsaying of Korah? Now, when we go to the book of Jude, the book of Jude, chapter 11, the book of Jude, chapter 11, says, well, actually, verse 11, there's only one chapter, there's only one chapter in the the book of uh of Jude, yeah, Yehuda, Melikut. And in verse 11, it says, Woe to them, for they have gone in the way of Cain and ran greedily after the era of Balaam for reward and perished in the gainsaying of Korah. Corey, and they spell it here in the King James Bible. They spell it here with a C. Bamarinya from Haile Selassie's version it says, Yehuda Melikita Me'eraf Ana Gut Erasara'an. Woyu yo lacho. Bek Ayel Mengeda Hedewalina. Sile Demoazim. Le Belama Siteta Rasacho win a salfo set it a wall. Be Coraim Macawem Teft a wall. Be Coraim Macawem Macawem Teft a wall. They perished in the gainsaying of Cora. Now, why is this verse? This verse here is, is, is very significant. Because it first says they have gone in the way of Cain, right? Cain. Now, where do we find Cain? Cain is in the earlier part of the readings, the Torah readings. In, in the first, actually, concerning the first part of the Torah reading, we get introduced to, to, to Cain, who is known here as Cain. A little difference in name, Cain, K-A-I-N, red eye. And then we have Cain, Cain. Or K L. Anyway, um, then it says, and they ran greedily. They ran greedily. It says, ran greedily after the error, after the error of Balaam for reward. And it says, lastly but not leastly, they perished in the gainsaying, in the gainsaying of 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 Kore, in the gainsaying of of Korah. Now, let us now use uh, utilize this particular New Testament um, reference to um, Kore uh, or Korah, the sons of Korah, and let us touch on the beginning of this particular reading from Oritza Hulkwe Mi'raf Asara Sadist. Besama'ab wa wali wa manfasik adus ahadu amlak. Orit ze hulk me raf asara sedist ka kut er an wa de feet in them below. Ye lewau ye lewima lich ye kata lich ye yisaara lich kore ka robele ma lejocha ye ele yaba lejocha datana berona ye faletima lija on be muse lai tenesu be muse lai tenesu Yes, we were using using the iota, and we see a little error here. It seems to have a line reduplicated over itself after the uh, tenesu. 
what a good a who let is around him and the judge who let me to am sa so watch a car in our sue gar a west i do car go by you why yet a merit who was in a chum yet a summa yeah mach the rule i look out a number good era source be musena be aron laya te sabisbo Mahibaruhulu yandanda chowa kedusana chowina egezi abherima be mekakala chowa na wina inante ijiga biza tachual be egezi abherima gubaye lai lemena te tabe yalachu alu. So this is the first bait, verses 1 to 3. Now Korah, or Kore, the son of uh, Izhar, the son of uh, Kohath, the son of uh, Lewi, and Datan and Abiram, the sons of Eliab and On, the son of Pelet, or Felet, sons of uh, Rubain, or Ro 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 Robel, Robel, in Bamarinya, in the Ethiopic, or Robel, which in the Hebrew is Rubain, or Reuben, took men. Verse 2, And they rose up before Musa with a certain of the children of Israel, 250 princes, 250 princes of the assembly, famous, famous in the congregation, famous in the congregation, men of renown, Verse 3, and they gather themselves together against Musa and against Aaron and said to them, Take, ye take too much upon you, seeing all the congregation are caduce so or holy, every one of them. And the Lord is among them. Wherefore then lift ye up yourselves above the congregation of the Lord, of, of Yahweh, the Hashem. Now, do, do you understand what's going on here? Now, now the sons of Kore, they rose up with some very famous ones, well-known ones among the Beta Israel. Not, not unknown people, you understand, but well-known ones. And this is speaking of Korah's rebellion. The Levite Korah, son of Izhar, he joined with the Reubenites, Datan and Abiram, sons of Eliab and On, son of Felet or Pelet, and 250 of the princes, the chieftains of the Israelite community, and rose up against Musa in Numbers chapter 16, verses 1 to 2. Now, Musa. Moses told Korah and his band and his gang and his posse to take their fire pans and put fire and incense or ashes on them before Yahweh, before Ha Elohim. We find this in Numbers chapter 16, verses uh, 6 to 7. Now let's. Let's follow this, follow this through. In verse 4, it says, Musaim abesem begimbaru wedeke. And when Moses heard it, he fell upon his face. He, 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 he prostrated himself. Kuteramista le koreima le wegonumo hulu. Nega, egezi abihera le arsua yemihono win. Kedu sima yemihono wena yasa tauk al. Ye meret awunim aso wada arsua yak arbewal. And he spake to Kore and to all his company, saying, Even tomorrow Yahweh will shew who are his and who is Kedus, who is holy. And will cause him to come near to him. Even him who he hath chosen will he cause to come near to him. Now this now touches on verses 6 and 7. And dihu wa dargu kore na waganihu lu. Tena ochun wusedu. This do take you censors kore 
and all your company, it says his company, but Bamarinya Korena Wegani Wegani Hulu. He's he's commanding them. Cora and and your gang and your posse and your company. Negem Beegazi Abihera Fitisa Tadera Gubacho. It anima chema rubacho. Indi him a yohona legazi abiher. Ye mi amurut o arusua kedus yohona. Inante ye lewi lejo choi. Ijiga biza tachuhala below a tenagracho. And put fire therein and put incense in them before the sustainer Yahweh. Buruku, blessed be he. Tomorrow. And it shall be that the man whom the sustainer Yahweh Baruchu, blessed be he, doth choose, he shall be kedus. He shall be holy. Ye take too much upon you, ye sons of Lewi. Now he's replying to them. He's saying, no, you're really taking too much on yourselves you you really really taken too much on yourself he's basically pointing to the gainsaying that jude 11 speaks of the gainsaying of 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 korah and they perished in the gainsaying in the gainsaying of 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 Korah, they follow these. They followed Korah. You understand? They follow Korah now. In Kutera Cementa, Musaim Korain Alo, Enante Ye Lewi Alijoch Simu, Ye Israel Amlak, Ka Israel Machiber Ye Leyachu. Ye egaziabi her nema maderia galgolota te saruzen. Indita 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 galegalua chuima be maheberua fita te omuzen. Oda ersua yak rabachu. Aya bek achuhumen. Seemeth it but a small thing to you. That the God of Israel, El Elohe Israel, have separated you from the congregation of Israel to bring you near to himself to do the service of the tabernacle of the sustainer Yahweh, Baruchu, and to stand before the Mahiber, Mahiberu the congregation or the society to minister to minister to them verse 10 antem gar antem ka antem gar ye lewina lijocha wandamoche hino hulu whatever sua kraboal kinetinema degmo watefella galacho hum and he hath brought thee near to him, and all thy brethren, the sons of Lewi, with thee. And seek ye the priesthood also? In other words, y'all have come close to serve the tabernacle. Are you trying to take over the whole thing, in other words? You're trying to take over the priesthood as well? hulu <laughs> Te sebis bachual, but ursum laia ta guaramer muzen aron mano. For which cause both thou and all thy company are gathered together against Yahweh, against the sustainer, against Jah. He didn't say, You're gathering against me. You're trying to, Moses didn't say, You're trying to take me out of my position. I'm the one in charge. No, he says, Y'all are rebelling against not me but you're rebelling against he and what is Aaron what is Haron that ye murmur that you're murmuring murmuring against him kuta asara hu let musim ye eli ya bina lejocha datana beronin ndia taruacho lake arsum ana metam and muse moses sent to call datan and Abiram, 
or Biram, the sons of Eliab, which said, they said, we will not come up. In other words, they, they basically said, we're going to be disobedient. We're not going to, we're going to do our own thing. We're not going to come up. Anmetam. Kuta Asara sourced verse 13 of Midre Bedda to Gedlen Zen, Watetina Mara Kamita Fesso Midder Yawetahen Aya Bekahimin Degme Benya Lai Rasi Hinalek Atadargalehin. Is it a small thing that thou hast brought us up out of a land that floweth with milk and honey to kill us in the wilderness? Except thou makest thyself altogether a prince over us. Unless you're trying to make yourself, Moses, a prince over us. In other words, they did not have faith that it was Yahweh who chose Moses to do this service for him and for Israel. They said that Moses took them out of Egypt because he's trying to make himself like a pharaoh. He's trying to make himself like a pharaoh in the wilderness. Ursana <laughs> So cha oya no cha chuena tawat alehin anametam alu. Moreover, thou hast not brought us into a land that floweth the milk and honey, or given us inheritance of fields and vineyards. Wilt thou put out the eyes? Are you going to put out the eyes of these men? Remember, we talked about the eyes of Harui or Horus in the previous one, the eyes of Horus, the matter with Hobab and Moses, and you be as our eyes and, and the Egyptian wisdom that's in these Jewish or Hebraic writings. Now, um, uh, uh, Datan and uh, uh, Abiram, they, they're making this accusation. They're saying, you, you have not brought us into this land that flows with milk and honey. In other words, you have not fulfilled your promises to us. They basically imply that all this is bullshit. Basically, it's BS. You know, it's, it's nonsense. Moses is trying to make himself a king, a leader over us. He took us out of a land of milk and honey, promising us a land of milk and honey. But we're stuck here in this wilderness. And it's because he's trying to make himself a prince and he's trying to blind us. He's trying to be our eyes of Harui. You understand? He's trying to blind us. You understand? We will not come up. Basically, we would not come up. This is what they're saying. This is rebellion here. I want you to understand this and see the significance even amongst I and I, us in this present time, the once lost but now found black sheep of the family. Now, Moses, he sent for Datan Abiram, but they refused to come. Now, the next day we're going to find out is that Kore and his band, they took their fire pans and they gathered the whole community. They gathered the entire community, the Mahibur. They tried to gather the entire society. They, they tried to gather the whole movement, let's, let's call it, amongst Aina Rastafari. They tried to gather the whole movement against Moses and Haron at the entrance, at the entrance of the tabernacle in Numbers chapter 16, verses 18 to 19. Now we're going to find out that the presence of Yahweh, the sustainer, Lotus Subhat, appeared to the whole, the entire congregation, entire community. And Ha Elohim told Musa and Aaron to stand back. In other words, to stand down, stand down, stand back, so that Ha Elohim could annihilate them. Annihilate these others. You know, Moses, y'all stand, y'all stand back. Let me take care, take care of these rebels in Numbers chapter 16, verses 20 to 21. Now Musa and Aaron, they fell on their faces and they implored, they begged, they beseeched Ha Elohim not to punish the entire community. Remember, this is a this is a rolling theme that we have. Remember in the earlier where where Yahweh said that. Stand back and let me destroy these, these, these complainers, these grumblers, these worthless, these useless, these listless, shuffle, 
shuffling Negroes, you understand? And I'll make a great Ethiopian Hebrew nation out of you. And Moses said, please don't do that. What would, you know, what would the other, what would Egypt think? They'd think that you took the people out just to destroy them in the wilderness. So the Almighty relented. Now, Elohim, he told Moses here to instruct the community, to instruct the community to move away from the tents of Kore, Datan, and Abiram. And they did so while Datan, Abiram, and the family stood, while they stood at the entrance of their tents. In Numbers chapter 16, verses 23 to 27, Moses told the Israelites, the Beta Israel, that if these men were to die of natural causes, then Ha Elohim did not send Musa, did not send Moses. If these men were to live and to die of natural causes, then Yahweh did not send Moses. Then, in other words, Moses said he would be a fraud if these men were to live and die of natural causes. But on the other hand, Negergin, if Egezi Abihar, the sustainer Yahweh Baruch, who caused the earth to swallow them up, then these men had spurned, had spurned God, had spurned God, Ha Elohim, had spurned Jah in Numbers chapter 16, verses, verses, uh, 18 verse 28 verses 28 to 30 let's just go there for a moment verses 28 to 30 28 uh hayasement musem ale yihina sera hulu la kenji ka libe and daya dele bezi tawak alachu and moses said hereby ye shall know that the sustainer yahweh hath sent me to do all these works for i have not done them of mine own mind or kalibe from my own heart if these men die the common death of all men, or if they be visited after the visitation of all men, then the sustainer Yahweh hath not sent me. Kuter Salasa, verse 30. Egezi Hergin, Adi Sneger, Adi Sneger, Biafeter, Midrima Fuana Kafta, and Ursuna Lenersuma Yalun Hulua Bit. Betut acho, but he would touch a wimma or a siola be wordu. Yan gize in a zi sawoch, a gaziabi herin and a naku tauk alachu. But if the sustainer Yahweh Baruku make a new thing, Addis Negarabia fetter. And the earth open her mouth, a midrim afwana kafta. And swallow, and swallow them up with all that appertaineth to them, with everything that belongs to them. And they go down quick, quick into the pit. Then ye shall understand, then you will be able to comprehend that these men have provoked, they have provoked Jah, they have provoked Yahweh, they have provoked the King of Kings and his Christ. Now, what happens next?